ISIS has been sustaining defeats across Iraq and Syria in recent months, but that doesn't necessarily mean that peace is looming. In part, that's because the Middle East's wars are as much about politics as they are about military prowess. Longtime Middle East correspondent Patrick Coburn is the author of a new book, Chaos and Caliphate, Jihadis and the West in the Struggle for the Middle East. I had a chance to talk with him about some of the themes in the new book earlier this year in his home in Ireland. Here's Patrick. Bring us up to date, Patrick. What, what, what's happening that we should understand about Syria these days? The Syrian army has retaken Palmyra, the ancient city in eastern Syria, and uh, defeated Islamic State in that area, which is very important because um, it's one of the biggest defeats that Islamic State has suffered. Uh, when Islamic State first arose in 2014, one of its uh, one of the things which propelled it forward was the idea it always won victories thanks to divine assistance. Then there was a line which was largely propaganda um, in the Gulf states, in the US and Europe, which said that the Syrian army and Assad never fought Islamic State. Now this was actually demonstrably untrue, and one could see this from the horrible videos that ISIS made, Islamic State made, showing Syrian soldiers being decapitated and shot in the head in 2014 and 2015. But that was a very widespread belief. And then when the Russian air intervention started on the 30th of September, there was another, what was essentially mostly propaganda, there was some substance in it, but saying that uh, the Russians were only attacking moderate rebels. Nobody knows where these moderate rebels are, was not attacking Islamic State. So the capture of Palmyra by the Syrian army and the Russians uh, is important because it shows that actually they are fighting Islamic State. Uh, and this is the biggest uh, defeat suffered by the organization. You've been following the campaign. What do you make of the way that American candidates for president talk about the crisis? And well, uh, you know, what strikes one about so Hillary Clinton, all the Republican candidates, actually with a, perhaps the exception of Trump, um, is it's based on wishful thinking and often just fantasy of what they could do or what they have done. I mean, Hillary Clinton's record is not good. She was in favor of the Iraq War in 2003. She was very importantly favored the Libyan intervention in 2011, though Obama seems to have had doubts about it. Uh, she was in favor of intervening in Syria in 2013. So it's very much a sort of traditional, you know, liberal with a small L interventionist. The, um, you know, the, the Republican candidates talk about Trump in a minute. Generally, it's sort of fantasy. And they're, they're accused. Hillary of the one thing she didn't do, which is really the re responsibility for the U.S. ambassador getting killed in Benghazi. Almost everything else she got wrong is the one thing that she didn't really, doesn't have direct responsibility for. Um, but that's all sort of based on fantasy. They would tear up the agreement with Iran. They would give full backing in every way to Israel. They would um, intervene against uh, Assad. You know, some of these things aren't obvious. You know, Hillary, for instance, in favor of safe zones in Syria. Sounds nice, safe zones for civilians. But hold on a minute. These safe zones, who's going to police them? Well, it might be the Turkish army or the Turks saying they will be policed by Syrian armed moderates. But who? The, you then have to realize the Turkish definition of a moderate includes people like al-Nusra, which is the al-Qaeda representative in Syria, which is... So a lot of these things... Um, are much more toxic than they look. And finally, you know, you've got two things happening at once. You've got the you've got the ISIS security question. You've also got this um, migration refugee crisis. Borders are reappearing in Europe. Um, what, what are you What are you making of all this? Like, how do you both secure well, yeah. security and not and allow refugees to move? Well, you know, this was two thousand and fifteen that. Finally, the calamity that's happened to the Syrian and the Iraqi people suddenly is having an effect on Europe, and it's happening its, its effect through two ways. One is these poor migrants struggling across the Aegean to 
get to uh, Western Europe, and also terror attacks in Paris and Brussels and so forth. So suddenly it's become a big issue. And very little said, well, how come that we let this happen? Our government, governments don't want to talk why this happened. They want to emote and have protest marches, but not actually say, well, actually, a lot of things we did was we created this situation by letting the war and giving support to one side in the civil war in Syria and uh, so forth. Thank <music> you.